Thank you for joining. I'm <laughs> Sherry from Sunflowers and Petals. Today we are talking about turning tragedy into triumph. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button below and also subscribe. Joining me today is Dee Pelagi, um, paratriathlete, teacher, and bike versus truck survivor. Welcome, Dee. Hi, how are you? Doing good today. So let's get started. Um, when did you start cycling and what type of riding did you do before the accident? Um, I mean, I was on a bike when I was a kid. Um, I moved to Chicago um, when I was teaching, so my student teaching, and I ended up doing a lot of bike rides in the city. We'd go down the lakefront, maybe like 20 mile rides. Um, I think three years into living in the city, I got rid of my car. Um, and so then I was commuting to work um, and kind of using it as transportation. Um, and then after my accident is when I started doing it for speed. <laughs> so a lot of times before it was just for like exercise or to get around. Yeah, that's great that you were able to get rid of your car and just commute. Yes, yeah, it was like, super nice. Yeah. My work was close. How long of a commute was it? It was only like two and a half miles each way. Oh, that's not too bad. No. That was perfect. So back in 2016, you experienced something all cyclists fear. Um, you were hit by a vehicle, actually a semi-trailer. Um, take me through what transpired. Um, so on Fridays, we had half days. And instead of having a teacher meeting, we got out at like 2 p.m. Um, my boyfriend at the time worked on Taylor Street. So that's about a half mile away from my work. So I'm on my way there. Um, and so like at an intersection, a truck had just, like his body language was showing that he was going straight, but instead he like zoomed past me and then hooked a right. Wow. Um, and so he, like I fell down and he ran over my leg and then dragged me, but another cyclist right across the street said, hey, you're running someone over. And so he stopped. So he didn't fully make the turn, which is probably why I'm like the statistic of like being here instead of not being here. Um, so that's kind of how that transpired. Wow. I, I, I just can't even imagine. Yeah. So, um, so as a result of the accident, you sustained yes. substantial injuries. You know, you fractured your pelvis, you damaged nerves to your arm um, yep. and your right leg had to be amputated below the knee. Yep. You know, that's a lot to deal with. What was your recovery process like? So I was in the hospital, I think, for about two and a half months. Um, so I think six different surgeries. And then I went to a rehab for three weeks. Um, and then I had like an infection. So it was a lot slower than normal. Um, and then for my recovery, I, I like had a... Um, device in my pelvic bone. So I wasn't actually able to bear weight for six weeks. Uh, so I couldn't stand up. I was using a wheelchair. So actually while I was recovering, I was like a wheelchair user, um, probably for at least two, three months, Wow. you know, until I could start getting on crutches and then starting the process of getting a leg. And then how did you physically and mentally get back to biking again? Um, so it's weird because that was just like a natural reaction was like, I'm laying in bed. I'm like, I want to get back on my bike. So that was like, number one, like very concerned about where my bike was, where like the lawyer had to like take it. And I was really upset about that. Um, so it was just a natural reaction. Like I wanted to get back on my bike. So I think I just, I ended up buying a new bike when I got out of the hospital. I think I had had my leg fit for at least a month before I started going on my bike. Mm -hmm. um, and in that process was just kind of slower because I had to learn how to clip in and all that. Um, where I hadn't before because I was just commuting. So I was always just using regular pedals instead of ever clipping and ever. So, so that, they, yeah, that really yeah. leads us into the next question of the challenges when riding a bike with a prosthetic. Yeah, so I think the most difficult is just finding what works for you. So I was trying to do it with the toe cages at first. 
and it kept clipping. Like if I was making a turn, the tow cage would just get in the way of the wheel. So that wasn't working and I'd fall. Um, and I think, so I did dare to try camp and they're the ones who like, I think they took like someone's pedal off their bike, put it on my bike, borrowed their shoe and end up working like perfect. Okay. So I just ended up switching. So I did my prosthetic leg clipped in, but my right, like on my good side, I had it with just a platform pedal still. So uh -huh. I think I was nervous about having both, you know, and getting stuck. So I wasn't used to it. So I think it was definitely a process of like two months to really figure out something that worked. And that was really difficult to like keep falling at first though. Because I was like, oh my God, like I can't bike, you know, but after I learned how to clip in cycling, is really nice. Like I don't, there's not a lot of weight on it. So it's really just about like getting to know how to use it properly. And then it's good. So like, are you clipping in on, on your other side? Yeah. So right now I clip on, on both sides. So that took okay. me a couple months, but yep. Once I figured out how to like fit on a bike properly, like cycling is really nice. I can't really stand up going uphill. So that's a lot slower, but in general, it feels like it did like before the accident. Great. It feels nice. It doesn't really have that much weight on my leg, like walking. So it, it's not really hindering in any way. So it's really like freeing, I guess. Um, but yeah, whatever you did before hand, your body does have like muscle memory. And so that really right. helps. Yeah. And so you mentioned Dare to Try. Um, yes. So in, you started doing triathlons back in 2017. Yep. So how did you discover Dare to Try and discover the sport of triathlon? Um, so I was in the hospital and I was like, oh, I want to like bike. Um, and I knew I just wanted to be active again. And so I was looking for different people that would work on like my prosthesis once I get out. And I ran across a name like Dave Rotter. Um, and he said he was like the prosthetist for Dare to Try. So I ended up just Googling their name. Um, and they were having a goal setting meeting at a brewery down the street, like a half mile away from my house, like very close. So I just ended up meant to be. <laughs> yeah, it was like super close. I was like, okay, I'll just show up to this meeting. And so I, like I walk in and there's like five people. It's like Carrie and Dan who are like started it. And then like a volunteer and then like two athletes. It's like very small. So obviously like a brand new person they've never talked to just like shows up. Um, so from there, I think I just ended up doing all their clinics. Like I showed up to their like multi-sport clinic and then just like kept doing stuff with them. Um, and so that summer I ended up doing a triathlon in August. And I think the goal setting meeting was in January. So I like showed up on my crutches, like very new and all that. Well, that's great. So were you a swimmer prior? Um, so I was a swimmer up until third grade. Um, and then I was a dancer like I have a dance minor in college, all of that. Um, and then like I would go downtown and like swim at Lake Michigan while my friend would like run on the path or something, but I was never really competitive um, for a long time. And I didn't really recreationally do it more than like five times during the summer or anything. So you've come a long way on all three sports. <laughs> yeah, I'd say swimming and cycling were pretty natural because I had done it like run. I was never a runner. Like I'm a dancer. So like if anything, like Short and quick is my thing. Okay. Um, so that's been harder. <laughs> so <laughs> what's next? Answers. Yeah. So what's next for you? Mm. So Oregon's been kind of hard with the pools. So I haven't really been able to train this year because in general, we don't have a lot of pools here. Like it's really not a big sport. And so there's a couple of pools with like two lanes that you have to reserve. Um. And then they haven't opened up any of the community centers. So I haven't swam in like a year. Um, so I'm going to try to do some just like alone triathlons this summer, I think. Um, and then I'm doing, I'm going to Ecuador to summit Cotopaxi in September. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of running and biking like I have this year, you know, do some hiking and everything. Um, and I think just like ease into triathlon again this season and then do races next year or at the end of the season once I'm able to get in the pool for a month or two now. Well that sounds great. I mean I know COVID yeah. has really put a damper on everyone's training. 
no matter. Yeah, what. I think it's another transition year for me because of the swimming aspect. I'm like, well, I, you know, I at least want a month or two in a pool, you know, before I do races. So I think it'll be a transition year and then I'll get into racing again, you know, by next season. Yeah, sounds good. Well, yeah. Dean, I appreciate your time today and I, I just wish you luck with everything, all your endeavors and your trip to Ecuador. I've been there. I yeah. loved it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. So thanks for watching another Sunflowers and Petals video. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and make sure to subscribe and enjoy the ride.